Okay. Um, so on uh, the chat GPT, so if you have, um, if you have plus, chat GPT plus, then you can go to plugins and you enable plugins and then you can go to the plugin store. And if you look in the popular plugin section or you type in notable, you can install the notable plugin and we would have to update the manifest to say this, but we do more than Python SQL and Markdown now. So, but here's what I'm gonna do, because I don't know if it knows about it, but I'm gonna say, hey, list the available runtimes on Notable. I want to use the Dino kernel. And then, uh, so what this does is it reaches out to Notable finds out that there's a TypeScript Dino package. So this is like what happened under the hood. Available runtimes, these are all the different um, runtime types and hardware sizes that are available. And so now I could say, and let's see if it, it's dis, it's listening, would you? Yes, make sure me a notebook. Do you, are you a person who thanks ChatGPT like after it does stuff for you? It depends on my um, mood. I, I okay, say it's thank you. Of... And then other times I'm like, seriously, what? why'd you do that? I do like sometimes like try to give like gentle feedback. Like, like I, I'm so Minnesotan that I like try to phrase it nicely to chat GPT. Like I wasn't quite what I was looking for, but and I'm going to tell it, um, let's, um, uh, make, make me a, a prime number generator. I don't know. Let's do that. Um, and while it does that, so you guys see the whole window, right? So I should be able to go here. So it created this notebook. And then what's happening now is ChatGBT is writing out the cell that it wants to see inside of the notebook. Oh, look, it already knows the answers. It's like, why, why'd you even make me do that? All right, and then if we go over here, it wrote this code and ran it. And so you could be like, oh, that's neat. And you could, you could ask it to do anything you want in JavaScript by telling ChatGPT to go do it in your notebook. And Kevin, going back to what you were saying earlier, what's what's why notebooks really work for chat GPT and any of these sort of chat-based LLM interfaces is it is fundamentally the same uh, call response structure. And what's exciting about it is rather than it coming back with just an answer that says, hey, I wrote this code and I did this thing, or here's this chart, you actually have a reproducible, collaborative, and extendable yeah. artifact at the end, right? You have a notebook that you can rerun because you ask ChatGPT this tomorrow or after lunch, and it might give you a different answer, especially to a more sophisticated question. Whereas the notebook is this artifact that exists that then you can extend and share and work with and, and eventually even ask ChatGPT, hey, turn this into a module so I can import it into whatever. That's awesome. Have you like experimented at all with like having it create visualization? Oh, it looks like you just did. Can you write a code to render a visualization based on prime numbers? Well, there we go. <laughs> yeah, and I've I've done that a lot in, in Python. I mean, the main the main draw for our plugin was doing this with with Python because it was like the the large language model knows Python, and once we realized we had this hooked up, it was like, oh, I bet it I bet it knows JavaScript. Of course, it knows JavaScript. Um, yeah, ChatGPT GPT has been writing my regular expressions in JavaScript for quite some time now. It's pretty. Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't write here, regular expressions anymore. It thinks it thinks that Dino has a plot library, which doesn't exist. <laughs> it hallucinated this library. So apparently, someone's oh, going to have to write this that. library now. Yeah, it's true. Like maybe we just have to. Why do want a camera to go write it? Hallucinations now. Like, <laughs> this is the world we live in. Um, so I did. I mean, admittedly, um, that that notebook I showed before. It it helped me with uh with this. <laughs> I told it to make this. I was like, can oh, you excellent. make this chart for me? Um, so if I instead give it, I'm gonna add this to the notebook and I'm just gonna tell it, I'm like, oh, okay, you know what? Here's a canvas. And let's grab let's grab D3 for that that notebook. Where did I put display? Yeah, let's grab this too. Ski a canvas sure takes a while. All right. 
So yeah, run and down. then what I can do is I can just I can grab the link to the notebook and I can say, hey, I'm installing some dependencies you can use instead uh, since this is server side uh, rendering. Uh, you'll uh, have to use the Canvas library. Uh, check it out. And so then, Kevin, and the one of the issues, of course, oh. with, with ChatGPT is the train, right? OpenAI is training. Dino is very new. And a lot of the JavaScript is developed for front end with access to the DOM and access to these libraries in a certain kind of way. And so tuning it and letting it know, like, this is how Dino works is something that, that is still, there's still more work to be done. Yeah, for sure. And um, so it, it's going now. So what it did there when I when I told it, I was like, "Hey, here's here's the the notebook." It was able to figure out what the file ID is because we've given it some instructions about how to read the files. Um, and so it reaches out to our our ChatGPT plugin, and then it gets back. Here's the entire notebook document, kind of in a linear format that the model can read. And then, oh no, that bug that hasn't been solved in the kernel yet. Let's see where that went. Let's just try to run it again. Yes. There you go. Okay. There, I don't, Look I, at that. Them, them the primes. Okay. Chat um, GPT coming for your job. You can get the cell again. <laughs> we fixed it. <laughs> we'll see what happens from it. Here's and so like one of the main ways that, that people use this, there's a lot of folks that aren't even using Notable directly. They just use it with ChatGPT to do analysis. And, you know, they'll be like, oh, you know, I've uploaded my spreadsheets or I connected the databases. And then it, it'll just like render the plots inside of your chat and you can you can go back and forth with it. Um, but then you have, you have this stable artifact at the very end of the notebook that you worked with. Uh, and so I've got a little, uh, a little of both. Yeah, that actually is, Super cool. Like this is one of the better, like, you know, at the end of a session with ChatGPT, I essentially have to, you know, copy paste the JavaScript it generates for me, like into the source code that I've been working on. Uh, this actually like pretty faithfully recreates the the conversation that you're having and then makes it like hackable from, from that point. Like you can go in and tweak the code that it gave you or, you know, oh, totally correct yeah. it version control. Like you can now version control a, a, output of one of these conversations, which is, which is pretty sweet. <laughs>